Okay, planting as evolutionary argument against naturalism as expounded in a three video epic by Veritas48. Uh, first off the bat, naturalism. I have a problem with the term um, and I would phrase it like this, naturalism as opposed to what? Everything is natural. Let me give you an example. There are believed to be other dimensions. You may have heard of string theory and brain theory and these are things that we've only hypothesized. We can't directly experience them, we can't directly observe them, measure them, we may never be able to understand them. That doesn't mean that they're beyond nature, they are part of nature that we may never understand. But there is no supernatural, I, I resent the term. And so, naturalism uh, as opposed to what? Now I hear you say, what about God? Well, if a being exists capable of creating a universe and causing ripples through our reality, our dimensions, then that is also natural. If God exists, God is natural. Uh, so, naturalism really is a moot point, it means nothing. Simply being a theological philosopher, someone who believes in a god, does not make you anti-naturalist, because why can't God be natural? He must be natural. Everything is natural. So. Planting as argument is not actually about naturalism, it's about um, whether God exists or not. So in a sense he's not arguing his own stated case. The name of the argument should be planting as evolutionary argument against non-God based cognitive faculties, which is not the same as naturalism. Now, the thing that really got my goat about this argument was that having outlined it, Plantinga then went on to come out with a massive non sequitur that if our cognitive abilities are God given, we can be assured that they are reliable. Where do you get off saying something like that? Let's say there is a God, an all powerful being of some kind who created mankind and well either created us as is with our cognitive abilities or at some point in our evolution intervened and supplied us with our cognitive abilities. How does that in any way attest to the reliability of these uh, cognitive abilities? God this god person could be a mad scientist experimenting on us, or he could just be an evil sh He may have given us just the right cognitive abilities to maintain a lie or an illusion, um, so that he can have continue to have his evil way with us. So that, that killed the argument for me stone dead right there. The fact remains, we all have the same cognitive abilities. Okay, some of them more developed than others, um, but we are all, if you like, stuck in the same bubble of perception. Uh, so we all rely on this interpreter that we call uh, reason, cognizance. We all rely on it. And it could be wrong. It could be fundamentally flawed. This could be the matrix. We could all be living in a complete illusion. So. In that sense, there is only one uh, reality, and that is practical reality. The one that we can interact with, the one that we can test, and uh, see if what we believe is true. You can believe anything you want outside of the practical world. You can imagine any kind of metaphysical, magical nonsense you like, and no one can prove it wrong. If it is out with the realms of physical evidence, uh, if it can't be measured, if it can't be tested, then you know, go ahead, knock yourself out. If that makes you happy, I'm very glad for you. Central to planting this whole argument here, which is already dead in the water, uh, central to it is this idea that we could um, evolve the right 
cognitive faculties to allow us to survive even if we reach the wrong conclusions. Now, I would first point out that um, Plantinga is not demonstrating any in-depth knowledge here of cognitive evolution um, because it is a fascinating field and um, anyone who does study it, even an armchair hack like me, knows that Long before there was anything uh, resembling reason, there was basic predator avoidance uh, instinct uh, combined with the carrot and stick of pain and pleasure, so, you know, punishment and reward if you like, and that the higher brain functions build on what is already there in the primitive brain. So, and you find this, uh, you know, in terms of stress and so on. Um, these instincts kick in. We have the, the fight or flight instinct, for example. <laughs> now, that should have invoked a reaction in you, which um, is a, a, some. You know, your face becomes flushed. You get adrenaline. That is an instinct. You didn't have to think about that. That happened like that. So that's a lower brain function uh, overpowering your powers of reason. And the powers of perception, observation, um, experience and memory, long before we had any complex reasoning capability, these would have provided a very basic reasoning capability which would have to lead to, by and large, the correct conclusions most of the time uh, in order to, to aid our survival and so evolve. An important part of our evolution as well as our cognitive abilities is the ability to communicate. And remember that communication is, uh, most communication still is non-verbal. So I'm not talking about the uh, development of spoken language here. I'm talking the, abil the ability to communicate, you know, surprise, um, fear, and so on. We, uh, as uh, communal animals, um, have communicated these things. So it's not necessary f for every individual to have an experience in order to know that that's bad. You know, we can uh, either have an experience and share it with others and they will benefit from that or we can witness someone having an experience that they are then unable to communicate to us and realise that that is a, a bad thing because, wow, that, that guy didn't come back, never moved after that. I guess that must not be a good idea. But the best answer to planting his argument is this. If um, our cognitive abilities were God-given, why aren't they perfect? Um, you know, by your definition, they ought to be. And they're certainly not. They're demonstrably not perfect. We're easily fooled in terms of um, you know, optical illusions. Uh, we can be easily deceived. Uh, we can jump to conclusions based on a small number of experiences. We can jump to conclusions about what our long-term experience will be, and it can be completely misleading. Um, watch videos by people like Darren Brown, who are absolute masters at using the flaws in our cognitive abilities against us. And then, if you want to take that step further, look at some of these TV evangelist preachers who go around preying on the, the weak and the old and the sick. You know, because the need to um, have hope is so strong in us. Our cognitive abilities are very flawed, which is why we have to come up with mechanisms to remove bias and eradicate error. And uh, one such method is, for example, the scientific method. Since this method was developed, it, it provided a means of testing what we believe against what actually happens in the physical world. Now, believe it or not, um, the fact that our cognitive abilities are imperfect is a prediction of evolution. Evolution is only using what is already there and small step changes to it. So it can only build on what it already has and that is why we expect to see imperfection. Our design is flawed and our cognitive abilities are no exception. That's a, a, that is actually a prediction of evolution. It's all the more important that we use things like the scientific method to establish 
objectivity and to maintain it, to arrive at the closest thing we can come to absolute truths.